Alan Quinlan is here with us to talk rugby. Alan, good morning to you. Morning, lads. How are you? Well, what a weekend. Big smile, big smile. Yeah, it, was, it was unbelievable, unexpected, I think. Um, by most people who would have been predicting or any sort of analysis pre, pre-match. pre I think, obviously, when the, the na- team is named the Leinster team on Friday, you're thinking there's a chance. And um, I think... It could look at the reality was it still was going to be a very tall order I, and for, for Munster to win that game. Um, they brought a lot of fight, a lot of determination and, and they stayed at it for the 80 minutes which was proved with the end. Um, I probably spoke about their fitness a bit during the season and it was really referenced at the start of the season. Uh, for various different reasons, they were out of the blocks very slow. They didn't have the best of pre-seasons. Uh, the Emerging Ireland Tour affected them early on in September. Um, and they had a dreadful start really with five losses in the first seven games and you know I suppose where where they're at now you're thinking um, it's a great achievement to have built on what they and and if you look back in the last number of weeks going back to the Glasgow game even the Scarlets game in Cork uh, and then losing that game to Glasgow you think that's the se- season's going to peter out there was, they were in danger of not making Europe not being in the playoffs and um, they've dug in there really and they've had a fair bit of adversity with the injuries and the setbacks around around injuries in the last number of weeks but to go to South Africa and get those two results and um, then go to Glasgow as well so they and, and away at the weekend the reality here Ger is and I think nobody's forgetting it or nobody's dismissing it Leinster obviously were their mind and Leo Cullen's mind was probably on, on next week um, when the camera pins up to the people sitting in the stand you're thinking that's some amount of quality uh, we know the depth they have and there's a certain number of players who played on Saturday which would they would make many other teams across Europe they're top class players um, but it gave a little bit of a glimmer of hope and um, to be fair Munster stayed in it um, there was times where I thought they should have scored uh, they, and they should have been yeah. a, a little bit more comfortable well, just to, to, to tease out the point about the relative strength of the two teams, like Munster coming into the game had a fairly horrific injury list as a result of last week's game. Yeah. And obviously Peter Manny was only fit enough to play the number of minutes that he did. It was incredible. He, he started and obviously had an impact in that period of time. But it wasn't like it was the first choice everybody fit Munster team either. And it wasn't like Munster didn't deserve the win. They butchered that, that's numerous been, chances. That's been you you being very fair and balanced. I think some people forget that. Um, you know, there's no doubt Leinster are ahead of the other three provinces. That's just a reality with their depth. Um, <clears throat> so for any other team to lose f- four or five starters, Andrew Conway isn't around either. You know, he's an international winger. Um, teams below that level of quality that Leinster have you know, it's very difficult for any other teams and the other provinces would be the same if they're missing four, five, six starters uh, plus other guys injured in the squad which every squad will have that and every sporting team. Um, there was a lot of opportunities in that game and I thought that Munster were... If they Munster had lost the game, people would have been asking the question and I was getting text messages and people asking me during the game, why aren't they kicking the shots at goal? Um, they kept going to the corner. Um if it works out, and I do, I say this in commentary a lot. If you make the decision of a kick, kickable penalty and kick to the corner, it's only right if you score the try. Mm. It's the correct decision when you score, and then if you don't, you're going to go on opportunity lost. It's cup rugby, um, but Graham Rowntree said they're brave, and and to be fair, sometimes brave can be linked with some stupidity sometimes, but they are brave, and and if you look at the stats of the game, Ger. And I want to take people back to Connacht Munster uh, a year and a half ago. Um, it was the end of December, start of January. Um, Connacht beat Munster, I think it was 11-10-8 or 11-8. And Johan van Grant spoke after the game that there was only a score in it. Connacht had a load of penalties in that game. Munster passed the ball 45 times in that game. And that was the stuff that really kind of <clears throat> was lost, that it was so frustrating to watch a performance of a Munster team going to and that's I've been respectful to, to Connacht but going up and playing that type of game where you're trying to contain and you're one out passes and you're kicking the ball away you look at the Munster team this season 
and we never thought they'd be in a position to win a trophy. They are now, which is a wonderful situation for them. But they had 20 offloads in that game on Saturday. Leinster had three. Can I just remind everybody that it's a complete fluke that Van Graan is not still the coach. If Van Graan hadn't been offered the money to go to England, he'd still be the Munster coach. Uh, the, the Ireland hierarchy wanted to give him a contract extension. Like... You know, yeah, and every uh, look, is, I was, I was to be fair, like, I, I was one of the people as well saying, you know, continuity and all that stuff, learn. Um, you've had a fair bit of time, you've got to change things around as a coach. Um, I was more disappointed with Stephen Larkham, you know, this uh, wonderful attack minded player when yeah, he was but with he wasn't Australia. the boss, the, he, the book yeah, stops at the boss, the right? Atta- okay, it does, but the attack, he was he was in charge of attack and Munster's attack, there was glimpses of it certain games uh, but too often it was kick the ball away and, and, and try and you know Grant seems to be like a lovely fella and all the all the uh, people down a there gentleman. really really rate him as, as, a, as a person but as a coach and that's all we're talking about here this isn't a, a, an attack on his person but as a coach the rugby was turgid and it, it showed no signs of this and within a year the, a well, new attack see, coach a new, a new yeah. defence coach and a new head coach who gives everybody the opportunity to go, you, you go and you tell us what you want this team to be. And I think I've said that all along, Jared. The Munster fans just want to see the team play, have a go. There's no expectation as regards winning Europe or winning the URC because uh, the, you want to try and create a bit of optimism with young players and change, that you're having a go, you're throwing the ball around a little bit um, and you're trying to attack more. And that's one big positive for this season, even if they don't end up with winning the final, which is going to be very difficult people will be happy with the way they've played. They've re-engaged with the fans. There's an excitement there. And bar, you know, a couple of performances at the start of the season, which there was mitigation for, and maybe the Glasgow game, you know, you even look at the games, uh, the Toulouse games, over in Toulouse in January, you know, attacking, winning in Northampton, um, winning in Edinburgh in December when it was, all the Scottish internationals were back. They've had some big away wins and, continuously you see him trying to attack and I think that's pleasing people okay yeah. you don't want to get away from the traditions of getting your 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 forward stuff right but um, there's been a lot of changes there and they've used a lot of players in the league this year up on 60 players um, which so is, they've, they've developed some strength and depth as well yeah and they have some good young fellas so like where they're at now you're looking at glass half way half full more than half full whereas a couple of weeks ago against Glasgow it was this is going to be the same old story. It's going to finish off um, negatively. They're not going to be... Europe is so important for, for you know, even Connacht win in Europe. It's massive from yeah. this year because you're getting that the money from that, you're getting crowds, you're getting the revenue around the corporate hospitality, all that kind of stuff. So it's vital to try and keep on the coattails of, of the Leinster machine, which has been phenomenal and fantastic, and they've done a wonderful job there. So, um, yeah, it was, it was very important at the weekend. And look... Again, I say it again, you know, it wasn't, this wasn't a Leinster C team. This was a Leinster A for about four or five fellas and then, mm. you know, yeah, with the back row, very strong squad. The back row that essentially played the whole game was uh, Deegan, Van der Fleer and Conan. I know Van der Fleer comes on after a minute, but like... And, it, it, and made 28 tackles in the game. Do you know, that, that, that back row could easily play for Ireland in the World Cup. Yeah, we wouldn't yeah. bat mileage. Um, so Doris is rested for one of the games or is injured or is, is you know, suspended, heaven forbid. But like... I, 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 I would. Um, it's a massive, massive win for Munster, and it's a sea change, I think, in terms of the rivalry. And the rivalry, hopefully, is back. The one downside from um, Munster's perspective, I thought Healy was sensational in the first half. I thought he was really excellent, and uh, now he's gone. And Crowley obviously is going to be the ten. But then, what happens after that? Who's the, you know, where's when Crowley's away with Ireland and rested, and his minutes are are capped? Um, I, I, they can't be happy about the fact that Healy is. Not playing. For well, the they made team. an offer to him, but I think he's obviously made a decision that you know when he made the decision, and he wasn't going to play for Ireland. Yeah, and and maybe he was down to pecking order with Munster and and change of scenery and all that kind of stuff. And now but he's ba- number one. Yeah, and to be fair, he's responded magnificently, Ben Healy, and he's undoubted talent. I think where he was probably uh, suffering a little bit last season was was physically and making tackles defensively in in some games and probably the energy he was bringing and we've seen a totally different Ben Healy we've seen the true quality and what a good player and what a top quality player he can be so yeah again it's 
making those kind of decisions that can backfire and you're in the Premier League they might let go of an academy player and suddenly he's a star player with someone else so look he's Kevin done, De Bruyne and to be fair to be fair to Ben Healy he's responded brilliantly and um, yeah amazing yeah and he was very very good the other day until he got the bang in the head and some stitches and went off and uh, you know Munster were down to the bare bone I must say this and to be fair he hasn't played in a good few weeks Rory Scannell was outstanding when he came on you know, and, and it's very difficult at times. And here's a player who's been there for a long time. And I was just delighted for him that he, he was able to step up in a game like that and say, I'm still around and I still have quality. He signed a new contract this year, hasn't played a lot for Munster. And, and he was brilliant. Jack O'Donnell off the bench had a great impact as well. So um, that's even more pleasing for me that some of the players that maybe have been questioned a few times over the last number of years... Um, are not playing international rugby. They came on and they contributed. And, and, you know, I think a lot of people can take a lot out of this. Obviously, if you're a Leinster fan and you're ruthless, you're thinking you're, 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 you're disgusted or devastated by the loss. But in some ways, and I know I'm a Munster man saying this, it's maybe a good thing for Irish rugby. Oh, I think it's a good thing for Irish rugby too. Sure. It, it gives obviously. a glimmer of hope for Connacht and Ulster as well to try and close that gap. Yeah. And you've got to have nothing but respect for Leinster. And again, the reality of what was sitting in the stands is there for everyone to see. But um, it was a great, great determination, great heart out of Munster. And coupled with that, they played really good rugby. It wasn't like, oh, we're going to sit back here and kick the ball up yeah. the touch lines. They actually played a lot of rugby. Now, they got some breaks in the game um, that would be interpreted a little bit what, different. What did you make of the referee's performance? There was a little bit of controversy in the build-up, of course. There's a couple of decisions that I thought Munster got the benefit of, but um, I think um, the one probably in the 71st, 72nd minute, the scrum, I think Frank Murphy probably... Uh, could have given a penalty there All to Leinster. Player. I, it's not I know that, that was part of the bill. I know that's not to do with that. Because Frank has done matches before yeah. where I would have said, well, Frank was very hard on Munster. Um, so it's a difficult one for him. It just uh, appeared like it was the same scrum in the first half. That was it. Okay. But I look back on this again numerous times. And, okay, the scrum wasn't settled when the ball came in. And could easily have been a penalty probably should have been a penalty and I think if Frank looked back and he said well I could have given I could give a penalty there but if the scrum was moving around it was never settled so he interpreted that that's the game though because that's on the 10 yard line if Leinster get a scrum there scrum penalty they kick the ball over the bar and the game is over Luke McGrath could have been sinbin in the first half he didn't yellow card him he had made a tackle on the ground previous to that on Jack Crowley, which was a penalty. A couple of minutes later, his hand is out where Frisch potentially gets the ball. There is cover coming across. That could have been a yellow card. Uh, the Ryan Baird one, which some people said were, was harsh, that's um, the TMO called that. Um, so that wasn't Frank Murphy's call. But That's the knock-on. It's kind of hard to see which hand it comes off. And where Bears got Yeah, I think look when you slow it right down and look at it a good few times, you can see it. It does hit Tommy O'Brien's hand. How much of it, his hand? Again, it's but that was a TMO that uh, Ben Whitehouse called that. Um, I don't, anyway, once we're the better team is the thing, right? The Leinster fans can give out and complain about that, but like that does. Yeah, but complaining about the referee is 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 a bit of sour grapes. Yeah, and it's and um, I thought Frank Murphy did well in the game. There was a couple of decisions certainly that could have went the other way. So, and and they're key, but ultimately maybe it was just that day, one of those days that these things happen. And it wasn't unfair. I know that myself from the playing game. sport. If you stay in the fight, Jerry, you create a little bit of luck. Yeah. Uh, at times, there was both sides infringing at breakdowns. Penalties could have went either way. Very harsh um, lesson for those mm. Leinster players. But and if I you look at the amount of tackles that that um, Leinster had to make in the game. Um, it's it's phenomenal. Two hundred and forty six tackles. When do Leinster have to make that many tackles? So they, they couldn't I kick the ball. You, they couldn't get their patterns of play yeah, going. Yeah, and uh, Munster had it for so long. That's um, very worrying from a Leinster perspective. It's nearly sixty percent possession. It's nearly the same. Fifty six percent territory. So it wasn't. This wasn't the case of Munster hanging on. And Munster probably could possibly have won that game and possibly should have won that game by more. Yeah. They had great opportunities and they you could argue that they weren't clinical enough and that they should have taken chances. But mm-hmm. you don't kick to the corner and suddenly think, well, there's a foregone conclusion here. We're going to maul Leinster over the line. They're too good for that. 
Um, and I really find it baffling that people start criticising Leo Cullen here. Well, you I'm, know, for what he's done and what he's achieved for Leinster. Yeah. If I, Leinster win that game, he's he's a genius and it was a masterful stroke. Um, you can It's very difficult to pick your full strength team there and manage what they've done in the last few weeks. The only comfort is they've all been at home. They haven't been getting on an airplane, travelling, and all that kind of stuff. But um, it's baffling to think that they qu- question that. Like sport can be fickle, and I don't think anybody... had so many disappointments over the years. So yeah. look for them to see the joy in people's faces, who the kind of die-hard, real passionate rugby fans who've travelled all over to to stay with him through really tough times. It was a good day for them, and it was a great day for the team for the effort they put yeah, in, and a great, great um, atmosphere as well. I do want to play you this though, Quinny, because uh, apparently it doesn't really matter. It was all in vain. Oh yeah. The the whole thing is done and dusted. The Stormers are the URC champions. They're just they're they're collecting I, the trophy. I believe it, so, yeah. Is this the trophy lift? Can we roll it there, Oshu? <laughs> That's them watching Munster kick the drop goal. Throwing the babies in the air. Do you recognise these people, Quinny? I, I do, yeah. That's the head coach, John Dobson, there, and this is Joseph Dweber, the hooker. We're going to F them, them up. up. Apologies for any young ears listening to A little Eight. bit of motivation, but then somebody else said to me afterwards that. Um, it's because they don't like to travel. They, they don't want to go economy to Dublin again for the final, and. Uh, they can uh, they can stay at home. Um, I just couldn't see Andy Farrell, Joe Schmidt, Leo Cullen, Stuart Lancaster as a coach, kind of high fiving people after a match. They'd be running uh, like even Declan Kidney back in the day. He'd be running around saying, "Turn off the music! What the hell are you doing? You think you've won this already? You know." But look, they do bit of emotion after the match. They and do think, they do they've, think won they've won. That's, it, a, yeah. that's really disrespectful. That's really disrespectful to the monster. It was deleted afterwards, as usual. Jeez, but it still uh, happened, though. Yeah, you need to shoot the cameraman there who's ever, who's ever taken that video and posted it. But look, they're an unbelievably powerful side and uh, they're having a few drinks after the game. Um, we've, I've been in that situation before where you're kind of waiting in another semi-final to know where you're going to play. I think Scarlet's around 2002. They were nearly beating Leinster in Nottingham Forest ground and we were all kind of watching in Thorn Park waiting and hoping that the Scarlets would win. Thinking that you have a better chance against the Scarlet side, not being disrespectful, they had a lot of great players at that time and really good squad, but the English Leicester team was full of all the English internationals and Back and Johnson and all oh, these yeah. fellas. And we're thinking if Scarlets get there right, it balances itself out a little bit. It's on in... in um, is that the hand of God? But well, we weren't not uh, 2002, yeah. yeah. yeah it's just played. so brazen, though. I've seen teams celebrating, like, you know, a potential opponent or whatever. Coach. But it's, it's so... Coach. It's, it's so probably the coaches there that are alone, you know. Look, they're relaxing. They've just won a semi-final. I can understand players being delighted. They do have hot advantage. They do, yeah, and do you know what I mean? But Joseph Dweba kind of a little bit into the camera. I don't know. Uh, a strange one for me, but... Um, it will be a mammoth task for Munster, but they'll have players back now and they'll 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 have a chance, a real good chance. Um, Connacht and the end of the Andy Friend era came to a, a suitable end down there where they absolutely took the fight to them, scored some brilliant tries. Their backs were astonishingly good and creative and they're just a little bit underpowered when it comes to this level of competition. They didn't manage the game, Gerard. Like... <laughs> That'll be the frustration when they look back at it. Um, territorial kicking, um, exiting out of their own 22, um, mistakes, you know, kicking penalties down the touchline. Jack Carty missed kick two of them dead. Um, really frustrating, for, for I think, because they really asked a lot of questions of, of the Stormers. They controlled the ball, they held on to possession for, for such long periods. They were incredibly brave in what they were trying to do. But then naive in other other situations where they kicked loosely. Um, it was a mixed bag as regards managing the game from as regards the effort and the the you know the commitments and the, the 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 intensity around what they were trying to do, the way they responded after, you know, going eight nil up and then they were, you know, they're twenty four eight down. You'd think the game is gone. 
Um, Conor Oliver scores that try just before half time, and I thought, yes, that's it. There, it gives them a real lifeline going into half time, and then they come back, score another try, and uh, it's twenty four twenty, and that's it. You need to just shut up shop a little bit here, be tight in defence, um, be a bit practical in your approach, and get down there, kick a penalty, bring it back to a point, make them nervy, and they just didn't do that. They were a little bit loose at times and defensively at times you know when you think that the Stormers had 29% possession in that game and they scored six tries now that would indicate that there's individual brilliance <coughs> there which Manny Libok the out half was phenomenal he had a super game he scored 23 points two tries and um, he was brilliant but some of the balls the, the kicking and the defensive line was just loose and they allowed the Stormers to run back at them and they're big men and they're, they have that bit of uh, ability to step you and go through you. Um, so I thought a couple of the tries they conceded were soft. They'll be disappointed with that. It's a shame really because th- there was it was a game there that I really felt at 24-20 that Connacht, they were asking all the questions here and it was just small margins. Look, and it's hard. It's easy for me to say it here. They were brilliant and what an end to the season for them as regards where they were again three months ago under a lot of pressure yeah. not looking like they'd be in the playoffs not can look looking forward like to next season with yeah the, they're in Europe hope. as well and it's massive for them um, to be in Europe the same way as for Munster from a financial point of view sponsors all that kind of stuff excitement around building a squad um, it was a pity because you know in the end they, they you know they got late tries the Stormers to put it to bed but I thought yeah you know it was an opportunity lost for them where do you think where do you think Joey Carby's playing his rugby next season Um, I think he'd be playing in Munster right Um, I think he's got to show a bit of grit now and determination to to get back um, show his quality it's been a tough couple of weeks for me I've watched him at a lot of these games and just looking down the sideline he's doing bringing on water he's bringing on messages really difficult situation for him he needs a little bit of an arm around him um, and that's the cutthroat nature of sport you know ruthless decisions against you know a player here who I still think has massive quality um, has become a little bit um, lost in a sense that you know he's he's out of the Irish setup. he's now not getting picked in the Munster 23 um, so look I hope somebody kind of puts the arm around him and, and picks him up teammates as well uh, because he's he's a quality player I think going away, I'd love to see a fight out of him now to say, right, OK, you know, it is what it is. I'm going to have a really good pre-season here, uh, get myself right again and try and reinvigorate um, myself, himself. Going away, obviously, sometimes a change of fortunes if you're not in uh, yeah. getting picked can help, but I'd love to see it. There'll be plenty of opportunity for him to play next season for Munster with Jack Carley in the Ireland squad. Because Carley now is absolutely going to be in the Ireland squads. Like... If you're picking an out half from the performances at the weekend, maybe Healy's slightly ahead of him. But, you know, obviously he goes off. But Crowley's ahead of his Leinster compatriot who he was up against at the weekend. And Frawley as well, probably. Yeah, I think that the the, the pleasing thing for Jack Crowley is, um, you know, obviously it's a massive moment for him at the end. It's a massive moment for, for Munster. Uh, but I think overall, playing at 12, moving into 10... Um, and he hasn't been his best, you know. His two performances in South Africa, I think, weren't the best from Jack Crowley. Um, but he's an undoubted talent. He's a real footballer. He's a physical player. Just look at the, the build-up to the drop goal at the end, the way he runs back um, and, you know, knocks Harry Byrne backwards. Um, he's got momentum. I think he, he he's not afraid to be physical. He made some really good tackles in the game. So... You know, he's still growing and learning, I think, Jack Crowley, and there's more to come, but that's a big moment for him. And sometimes people, individuals in sport, need that to kind of kick on. Um, Very, very talented player. A couple of quick comments for you. Owen Alcock says, at the end of the day, if Munster had lost, it would have been a tragedy. They were in control for most of the match. Choosing to kick for the corner showed intent and mindset, but almost cost them. Michael White says, Munster have probably done Leinster a favour. No complacency next week. Munster physically brilliant. Leinster too many unforced errors, knock-ons, line-outs, etc. Sharpen us for next week. I don't know how important this week... I don't know how important the defeat is. Like it's just a downer in training for a few days and then they move on. Because yeah, I think it's it makes them... It creates a bit of... Uh 
tension, a bit of anger, more determination, not that you kind of would drop your standards. I don't think Ronan O'Gara would be thankful to Munster um, <laughs> kind of poking the bear a little bit like this. But, Will um, it have an impact on that? It does bring a bit of pressure on Leinster and, and if it's used in the right way, yeah, it can fire them up even more. Um, you know, very small margins mm. at this level, Shane, and sometimes the mental thing of of creating that edge. Um, but look, Saturday will be a belter of a game, I think, against two heavyweights. And uh, But I think Leinster, look, very small margins. If, As I said, if Leo Cullen wins that game and Leinster win it, it's the best decision ever. So it's, yeah, you kind of live by the sword and die by the sword. And look, inevitably, the run of matches, you know, Munster had won two of the last 12. One of them was a Rainbow Cup match. Um, it was just their day on Saturday, but they created their day. Over a period of time. Yeah, and I think the, the last number better. of weeks, they've yeah. become tighter as a group. I think South Africa really galvanised them, that that trip. And I have one last one for you here, we've got time for. Uh, <coughs> has Antoine Frisch a chance of the World Cup squad, asks Peter M. I would say so, yes. And I've been saying that for a while. He needs to probably, <coughs> you know, just tighten up in certain parts of his game. Um, but he's a wonderful player. And you look at the end of the game, him cleaning out breakdowns there. He's not afraid of the hard yards and he's the most similar player you'll see probably not just in, in Ireland but in, in, in Europe um, to Gary Ringrose. I'm not, he's not at Gary Ringrose's level but I think he has the ability to get there. He's a great elusive runner. He's physical, good carrier um, and I think he has a chance. I think he should be. Lo- he will be being looked at for sure. Did any of the Leinster players damage themselves in the eyes of the Ireland selectors given the fact that they couldn't upset the rhythm of Munster and that they get sucked into playing the game and allowing Munster to dominate the way they did? No. There's no player that played for Leinster at the weekend that would have damaged their Irish chances. I think uh, it was an incredibly intense game and, and that's the way it should be looked at. Um, credit to both sides. like Phenomenal work rate. Um, and tension and and you know intensity to the game so there's nobody there that kind of had glary mistakes and and made lots of issue, had lots of issues and that played themselves out of contention it wouldn't be viewed like that obviously if it goes over a number of games you start to to, to look at that but um, no I don't think so what about the Leinster players who weren't playing much better for them not to be playing in that game when you lose uh, when it comes to selection for this but well, if they were playing it's unlikely they would have lost to be fair because they're top class world class players it isn't just good international players there's world class players there that the camera was panning to open the open the stand so um, Munster were given the opportunity they took it if they didn't you know someone said to me on Friday if Munster don't win this game it'll be it'll be another disaster it was like that game last the end of May last year when when Leinster would have very much second stroke third string team beat Leinster 35-20 five in the Aviva and the last league game proper round 18 last year um, that was nearly worse it's not it's bad enough losing those big games but then when you're beaten by a team like that um, so uh, yeah it was a really 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 important game that Munster won that one alright so feeling pretty good about life Munster well fans. you know it's it, I think it's I like the fact that they of course, they jumped around at the end, and that's out of respect to how good Leinster are being, have been, and are. Um, You've got to celebrate the victories. Yes, the way. but I, I like the fact that you know Peter O'Mahony, the game face on, even Jack Crowley, the way he spoke at the end yeah, was yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Um, th- there's no point in doing all that if you don't turn up in a final. There's no guarantee that they'll, you know, they're 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 going to be very much underdogs. But you know, there's an opportunity there now, and that's what their focus has to be on. Yeah. All right, good stuff, Quinny. Thanks a million. Cheers, lads. We'll uh, obviously have uh, Alan's preview of the Heineken Champions Cup final a little bit later on in the week. But for now, if you want to get in touch, 087 9180 180 is the WhatsApp number. You can uh, subscribe on YouTube if you want to leave a comment, youtube.com forward slash off the ball. We're live there every morning. And of course, you can get us on your smart speaker by just telling uh, your smart speaker to play OTB Sports and Radio. The, the Red 78 will be a bit easier this week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely with Neve and myself. But anyway. Been a positive few weeks in the Red 78. There you go. Uh, what's rare is what I know it has. It's been a, a massive um, change. We're, we're 